Hi guys, this is Chip and Guardians Adventures. It's Friday morning. How's everyone doing? We're going for our walk. Yes. As you can see, we're going for our beautiful walk. And yes, I wear a mask for two reasons. Look how beautiful this is. Yes, I'm in an open field and according to the governments and scientists it's less likely to catch coronavirus or anything else uh, when you're out in public two reasons why I still when I'm out in public and especially in a place like a field this is a farmer's field the reason I wear it is one coronavirus and I don't trust the government anymore since I had the AstraZeneca and they said it was safe and it wasn't and made me very sick and as I'm apparently I don't know a couple of thousand people who become seriously ill and died with it it's not important what's important is it didn't kill most of the population so that's fine by the government that every human life is not important according to the government right secondly I have bad hay fever and this time of year it's really bad you know like april may is really bad june july is really good because by then i've taken anti-inflammatories i take anti-inflammatories in march um hay fever medications in march to start off then i cut grass and sniff grass and get my body you know used to it and stuff like that okay so that's why okay so yeah call me what you like but Michael Jackson was wearing masks way before the pandemic, saying that germs are all over the place. Also, I, I looked up a documentary, and apparently in the atmosphere, there's still skin from someone 100 years ago still floating around in the atmosphere. 100 years. Can you imagine you breathing in somebody else's skin from 100 years? Wow. True or not, I haven't got a clue. I just know it was on the documentary. So, um, go look at it. Right. So, as you can tell, I've start, I'm going to do a thing. This is the day in the life of Chip and Guardian, right? So, a lot of people have been saying, I've got cancer. Um, got AIDS or something like that. Because of the amount of weight loss that I've lost. And how thin I am. Oh, I'm blissemic, bl 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 I can never say that word, bulimic, or I must be anorexic. So let me answer a few of them questions. No, no, and no, and no, and no. I have bowel disease, I have Crohn's and IBS all in one. I have it in my small intestine, not my large which is where all the dietary needs get nutrients and stuff like that. I'm in chronic pain 24 hours a day. I have ADHD, which means I can't sit still for five minutes. I can't concentrate on things for long. And even with medication, um, I'm moving around a lot. So I'm burning more calories than I, I'm able to absorb. Right? So... That's why. On top of that, yes, I lost an extra stone of weight when I had the AstraZeneca because I was vomiting. It made me vomit. It cramped my stomach. It attacked every part of my disorders, every part of my pains. I mean, if you've had if you've had the injection and you've had you're you're not ill like my brother, very healthy. Uh, weight conscious bodybuilder like he goes uh, gym he goes um, eats healthy it ripped him apart he was aching he had backache he had migraines he was vomiting he was diarrhea he he put he was in a bad poor state for someone who is hugely healthy and strong it knocked him out it kicked his ass and it ripped me a new one so now I've got a bleeding stomach, 
um, on an emergency list to see if they can operate by going inside my throat and my bowels to see if they can sew up um, the bleed, the split, before it splits anymore. But because the coronavirus is dangerous to me, because the coronavirus is dangerous to me, I can't catch it. So they have to make sure that the hospital is safe enough that there's no chance of me catching it. And kudos to all the cleaners and everyone like that in that hospital, nurses and doctors and that to keep that hospital clean and the environment as clean as they can. Okay, so. Guardian, just give me a minute. Right, so. So, yeah, so no, I am got cancer. No, I'm not got anything like that thank god um it's just i got skinner really fast because i couldn't lose any more weight trouble is i vomited for 16 days i vomited for absolutely 16 days without stopping and i got seriously ill so and that that's not all i was doing either so what what um is happening is i'm just in a bad way at the minute so um i needed encouraging to eat um when you eat on your own what happens is your brain wins every time i don't know if you have mental illness but if you're if you if you or your someone you know has very bad panic attacks very bad um, if they go shopping or something like that you get very very uh, panicky because you don't want the panic attack to happen right if you've got uh, like scared a panic attack set off by spiders you can avoid it but as my panic attack is pain because I've been in the most horrific pain you can think of. When I eat, my brain tells my body that it's danger. It's bad for you. So I can be starving. My blood sugar could be dropping, guardian pressing the button, everything like that. And then on top of that, I've got to eat it. But by the time I start eating it, it's already said to me that that's not only going to hurt, but going to cause trouble. Here's someone. I don't know who's that with their dog, but I'm sure God, you know, tell me. Oh, yeah, he, he knows him. It's a Cocker Spaniel. Anyway, so um, what happened is um, they said, do you know what a mukbang is? So I said, yeah, it's when you get smacked by your key workers or something because you have um, your, your clothes have become mucky. And he went, nope, you eat in a mukbang. When you eat muck, nope, I'm not doing that. I don't care how it's going to make me feel. She went, no. The reason why they call it muck bang is because you get mucky all over your face and stuff with all the sauces and stuff. I went, ah, yeah, I can see that. But it might help with your disorder. So I went online, saw everything. I was gobsmacked at how many people do it. I didn't like that MRSA stuff. Um, you know, the one where you listen to them swallow and chew. Because I don't know what it is, why they don't chew, and they just gulp. But I was finding myself having severe anxiety, he's a choking fit. It was that bad. Now, see, these people aren't wearing masks. Why? Because the government apparently told them not to, because they don't need to, because they're outside. They're not in an enclosed space. And there's a higher chance. But this is what I'm saying. People listen to what they want to listen to with the government, and then when the government says something else, 
they don't want to listen to everything. In my eyes, you either listen to it all or listen to nothing. But you can't pick and choose because that's when harm happens. Right? So, these aren't wearing masks. So, Guardian, come. So, we're going to go this way. Come. He looks knackered. Come on. Morning. Morning. You can't play today, darling. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In it. <laughs> Come on. He's getting bigger. <laughs> no. Yep, definitely getting bigger. Guardian's getting a lot bigger. Everyone said that that they've not seen him for a couple of days because um, I've been coming out super early, like half four or five. As soon as the light coming in um, to get back. Yeah, so, anyway, so, yeah, but see, I've kept my mask on, now if any one of them have got the COVID virus, I ain't going to catch it, um, yeah, so, no, I haven't got cancer, no, I haven't got any of them serious diseases, I know bowel disease is serious, but cancer and that, wow, I've got a friend who's going through it now, with the pandemic, and she's on, it's come back and she's going on it again, they're trying to get her to... Guardian, watch your eyes. They're trying to get her to take the jab. And because she saw the state of me, I collapsed. I collapsed on the floor taking Guardian for a walk because I had cramping. And my doctor always said, when you got cramps, especially cramping in your legs, stomach, back, go for a walk and it will help and drink plenty of water. So that's what I did didn't realise that it was Dastrovenica causing the cramping and it was blood clots. So it made it worse, but there you go. Anyway, on a brighter note, so that's why I started doing mug bangs. Now people are saying, Chip, you've got to do a bit more in the intro. And I went, what the bloody hell is an intro? And they went, before you, you go on to do the mug bangs, go on mug bang channels and you'll see. So I went on mug bang channels. I do like Amy and, and um, Lee's one. I think they're funny together, I do. Oh, look at that. One for sorrow, magpie. Good morning, Mr. Magpie or Mrs. Magpie. Or they magpie, the transgender ones. Right. So, oh, look, we've got the birds. We've got guardian leaf them birds. I've been training them. Now, listen to this, right? Everyone has a go because I'm a hunter, right? By nature. And a gatherer, but mostly a hunter. And people are having a go at me. I don't hunt for sport. I don't hunt for fun. Whatever I hunt, like rabbits or whatever, I keep. I, I eat. And I also do stews and that for the homeless. But I don't practice by shooting animals and killing them. And then that's it. I, I'm an animal lover. I believe that everything has a state in this world. And I believe that if that rabbit was meant to be on my plate, I would catch it. If it wasn't, the spirit world would interfere and I wouldn't catch it. Right? But here's the thing, guys, right? I live on a farm. If we don't hunt rabbits... The rabbits will take over and eat all the crops. Now remember, we're not in the EU no, EU no more. So now our farmers, as you can see, having to do, I will be taking you on a tour today, but having to do, as you can see, um, they're having to grow fruit, vegetables and stuff that they've not been able to grow for God knows how long since they've been in the EU. Right? They've been told which to grow, what to grow. So they're using every part. But at the same time, if there's too many rabbits and animals, what's going to happen is the farmers, at the minute, are using this high beam screech that normally humans can't hear. Or, or dogs, but like rodents can. And it kills rats and mice and stuff like that. It's supposed to blow their brain which I don't agree with, but they need to keep our food safe. We need to eat, right? So we need to work together. 
So, um, if you look online for rabbit ears for dogs, you see how expensive they are for a kilo. For hare's ears and rabbit's ears. Do you know how expensive they are? If I work with the farmer and say to the farmer, look, if I kill certain grogs a year, like especially, like, I don't do it in spring. I don't do it between March, April and May. Reason being is because I don't want to hit a pregnant rabbit. I know it sounds weird that we're trying to take the population down, right? There is other ways. We can put food where we can put medicine in the food to stop the females able to get pregnant. Like, like you know, like humans get them um, to stop women getting pregnant. Uh, what they call birth control. You can actually do birth control for wildlife if you wanted to. But they choose not to. So, I give it to dogs' homes. The rabbit that I take, I skin them and stuff because I know they get scared. I use every part of what I kill. And on top of that, I make sure that the rabbit is... Um, I sit, I say thank you for giving me your life, for us to have life. I don't see that happening with the cows and stuff. Right, Guardian. Guardian, right. We're going right. Good boy. Yes, Guardian knows his left and right. So, um, yeah, so I'm not there for sport. I hate hunters who hunt for sport. I hate hunters who use dogs. Guardian, come. Come. I use, I hate it when they use other animals to kill other animals and train them to kill other animals. I don't like that. If you're going to do it, if you're going to hunt, you don't take guns to hunt. I don't. I use what Mother Nature gives me, like the twigs and stuff. I set traps with the environment. So, like, see these twigs? I could make a four trap. I could make a snare with it. And then I could lift it up afterwards as soon as I finish what I have to do. I do not use any weapon apart from a skinning knife. That's it. I don't use any weapon. I don't hunt with a gun because I think that's cowardice. If you're a hunter, a true hunter, you would respect, respect the environment. You would respect the animal you're hunting. You will have to have a good enough reason why you're doing it in the first place, to be fair. And you would do it with what God gave you, as they say. I'm not saying it's religious, I'm just saying that's the word in they use. Right? To me, that's fair. That means I use my wit against the animal's wit. Right? So if they're clever and smarter than me, I won't catch anything. If they're not clever and smarter than me, I might if the spirit world allows me to catch it. So, that's the way it works. So, for those people who say, oh, you're a hunter, you do it for fun. No, it's not fun. Have you ever actually tried to kill anything, let alone a rabbit or anything, and you look in their eyes? Do you know what I've got to fight with? So I look in their eyes and I think, are you a parent? Are you just the rabbit that's pregnant? Are you... A family member or you alone rabbit or whatever I go through so much and if that rabbit's eye catches my eye I can't do it I cannot do it if that rabbit looks straight at me with its eye you know like how rabbits do the corner of the eye I can't do it so hunting isn't as easy as you think especially my kind of hunting I'm an old-fashioned hunter I do old-fashioned hunting, okay? I don't use Guardian as a hunter because I don't want him hurting animals. Although it would be easier if I could, but I won't. And I use what I've got. I don't use any weapons. I don't use any man-made steel or anything like that to trap an animal. I do it all from its own environment. Maybe that's why I'm successful, I don't know. Um... <coughs> So, but I will only do it 
for two reasons, survival and survival. That's it. So that's the end of that. Yeah, so hopefully the mug bands will get better and better. Um, the, everyone's asking me, Chip, why don't you do where your subscribers choose what you eat and then you go buy it? Well, because of my condition at the minute, I'm on um, a certain... How can I put it? Like, when I did the first one with Cherry Willingham Pizza, I love garlic sauce, and it wasn't very garlicky. I thought it would be safe, and I used sweet, sweet chilli sauce. I got that instead of the hot chilli sauce, thinking that would be safe. And boy, did I have a bad 48 hours. <laughs> so, yeah. So, no. So, what I was thinking of doing is a World War II... Hold on a minute, Guardian's all cooked. Guardian, wait. Wait now. Look at this, guys. This is what you get when you get a big dog with. Wait. Go on. So I have to do this, look. Stand till he pulls it off, see? Um, do, do a World War II um, food. Because according to the government... Careful with your eyes, darling. Careful. Come on, then. Um, look, you've got it all over. Oh. When he does that thing, I don't know if it's rabbit, poop, or whatever he's smelling. He rolls in it. He just saw a rabbit go past. Uh, he rolls in it and stuff. And then it takes me hours to get it all off his face. All them sticky buds. And... Anyway, so I thought I'd do a little vlog of uh, the day so we, we've we been walking for like two and a half hours so I'm, I, I've only done half an hour of our, the last half hour of our walk right, reason being is I've run out of things to say I think um, and I've got to be careful what I say apparently um, because they've let me loose on YouTube and my Social workers have said, Chip, you've got to mind your, your, your talking and you've got to be a thing. So, um, yeah, so I thought of doing a World War II where I cook the food like in World War II. Like go out, buy the ingredients, vlog, buy the ingredients, try and look for the ingredients and then see, Guardian, right and left. Good boy. Um, do the ingredients... And then from the ingredients, uh, make it exactly to the recipe of World War Two of the books and that. I've got I've got a World War Two diary of a, a housewife. Um, she was an old lady in hospital, and she was paralysed. She slipped down the side of her bed, and the nurses and doctors had an emergency on, and she was screaming in pain. So I took off all my machines and uh, my morphine drip and that and picked her up and dragged her out. Yeah, I did some damage to myself, but I got her out safely and uh, made her comfortable again. And her daughter brought in her great, great, great grandmother's diary of World War I and her great, great grandmother's diary of World War II on what they did like all the food and stuff. Now, if you're a subscriber, you will know that I can't read and write. I'm old, uh, I've got um, wedding number blindness, so I can't read or write. Doesn't mean I'm blind, it just means it, it doesn't figure out. It's a bit like a, a form of dyslexia. You, it doesn't, what, what's on the paper doesn't, my brain can't work it out. What can I say? I'm nuts. What do you expect? So, yeah. So, I'm going to do that. So, what do you guys think? Uh, would you be happy to learn about World War II's diets and how they ate and how we ate? And I'm going to do it. <laughs> There's a few things in there that is a bit worrying when it was getting read out to me. Like Sprite. Sprat. 
Sprite, Sprite. These fish that you have to eat whole, you deep fry them in uh, just some um, flour and most of it, most of the recipes don't use butter, oil, but you do use salt and pepper and stuff like that. So I was thinking to start doing that for, for a week, um, doing a bit of history about the food that British people used to eat in World War II and see if you guys fancy watching it. This isn't a cooking programme or a mugbang programme. This is my adventures, mine and Guardian's life. So you're going to see what it's like to live an autistic life with learning difficulties and ADHD. You're going to learn what people go through, like family members, if we're living with anyone. Um, we drive them nuts. Because we could be doing something like watching a movie and then they turn around and go, where have you gone? And I'll be doing something entirely different. Entirely different. Yeah, so... And now it's in April. Um, there's Guardian's fear is starting to fall off. If the weather changes and it gets colder again, Guardian's fear stops falling. And then when it gets warm, it starts to drop off. So normally it takes two weeks and he strips and then that's it. He gets bath and then he's fine for the rest of the summer then uh, until next year. But last year it was hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. He looked like I, I mistreated him. He had half his fur off and half his fur on. Now remember, he's an Alaskan Malamute. So his winter fur, he could go minus 20 in snowstorms and not feel it. You might see a deer. That's why I'm holding. Yeah, you might see a deer running. There's quite a few deers here. But we just don't want to see Daddy. He is a five-year-old. Huge. Huge guy. Huge. A huge five-year-old deer. We don't want to be seeing that, okay? We don't. So, um, he's huge. I mean, see them trees? He would reach the top of them trees standing there. I was, me and Guardian, like, got, I said to Guardian, down. And he went down, and I put my head down, and when I looked up at him, I was the same height as his, as his knee. Where his hoof was, if I stood next to him, he would be, and there was no way. I thought, bloody hell, I'm having a... I'm having an illusion thing. You know when you see things that aren't there? And I thought, I'm going crazy. My heart was panned, but Guardian saw him as well because Guardian reacted. And I watched Guardian's reaction and he laid down and looked on the floor. So I kneeled down and looked on the floor. And I was watching Guardian rather than him to see what Guardian was doing. Guardian was just keeping his head down. And then we looked up, he was gone. In there. He was just gone. So, yeah. Um, and I thought, because it's, like, at the minute, it's breeding season, daddies and mummies are going to be very protective over their new babies. Got and come. So, as long as we respect them and respect the environment, I don't think they'll hurt us. Because we're not, um, they know that we're not going to attack. I've got a few videos up of deers coming up to me in Guardian and a woman's looking like, oh my God, that deer just came up to you. And I was like, I know, and it's wild. <laughs> what the bloody hell? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And she was like, but you're a hunter. And I goes, yeah, but I also respect animals and don't hunt unless I have to. I mean, I'm a meat eater, right? So if I can't afford meat anymore because the stupid government has allowed it to go... Beyond me, I mean, look at a lamb, a little leg of lamb, 25 quid. How's me and Guardian supposed to afford that? 25 quid for a bit of lamb. You, you have neck of lamb, and there's no bones or nothing like that. It's just strip of lamb, and you want seven, eight quid for it. Lamb, you know. And besides, I prefer mutton anyway. I don't like lamb. It's too... It's not... It, it's got no flavour. And it's very dry and, yeah, there's not enough fat on it. It's just not a good, 
I prefer the older cows and lambs and stuff like that. The older meat. I really do. But try and find mutton these days. I asked my butcher. I said, why aren't you just leaving the rind on the bacon and the fat and stuff like that? Oh no. Guardian, wait. Oh no. People can't. Uh, people don't want that now. They want healthy. What do you mean they want healthy? It is healthy to eat fat. Body, the body can't absorb fat. But it helps you go toilet and stuff. It helps your bowels. And someone as thin as me, guys, do need fat for, for, to help so I don't have a heart attack or a stroke. And that's another thing. What is it with everyone um, about body shaming and non-body shaming and, uh, you, you know, why should anyone attack anyone for being anything? I can understand it if you're a paedophile or, you know, you hurt animals or children or, or you, you, like, rob old ladies and gentlemen and stuff. Yeah, I mean, give them hell, keyboard warriors. But you're giving someone hell because they eat. I don't understand that. Can you guys let me know why that is? I don't get it. Why would you attack someone? Because they're overweight and they're struggling. What, what's it to you? It's their pain, their body. If, if they were struggling and they couldn't breathe and they're walking or they're in a wheelchair and they're big, or they need to use them special, special, um, you know them special buggies in Tesco's and that, so they can do shopping. Why are you staring at them and laughing at them? What, what's it to you? I don't understand. It's their body. And if they like being like that, they obviously do, because if they didn't, they would die it. Guardian, wait. They, wait, you've got stuck again. Wait. I know you want to go back, but wait. Right, go ahead. Right. And I understand that. I get it. Yeah. Um, but why should you have the right? Because they're in public. To call them names and shame them and stuff. I don't understand. I, I, I get confused with that bit. There was like the other day, there was two. They were Chinese, uh, Korean people. Um, in their 60s. Doing shopping. I'm not going to tell you where. Um, but it was at one of the big stores. And... Two of these girls came up. I'm not going to tell you what, what nationality they were, but I, they were British, but I'm not telling you what colour skin or anything. Um, so we could start a war. Because everyone seems to judge people. If someone does something bad, oh, it's their colour skin. It's because they're this. It's because they're that. So I'm not saying it. But anyway, so... They were just doing their shopping... And he asked her, do you want some frozen peas? And she said, yes. Obviously, because he went to the pea hive and picked the pea up. That's what I assume he, he said to her. And next minute, these two girls walked up and went, it's your fault my mum and dad have lost their jobs. It's your fault I can't play with my friends. It's your fault that this pandemic's happened. It's your fault eating dirty food when, when you knew it was poisonous. It's your fault. And she went to smack him. So I stood in the way. And she looked at me and I went, I wouldn't. And she was like, oh, so you're on their side. And I went, whose side? She went, look at them, they're Chinese. So I went, are they? She went, obviously. And I went, oh, go, excuse me. So I saw her turn around to him and says, are you Chinese? He went, nope. And I went, where are you from? And he went, Japanese. And I went, whoa. I went, now, aren't you glad I stopped you hitting somebody, you thinking he was Chinese, and in fact, they're Japanese, number one. So you were about to beat people up that didn't even start this or anything. And you were going to beat them up. Can you imagine how you felt 
Now these were 20 and 21 year olds. Mine, not children, 20 and 21 year old girls. And they were like, well it's they're, they're the same thing. And I went, no, they're not the same thing for a start. I goes, they don't eat food like that. They'd actually uh, eat more fish than anything else. They don't go around killing animals and dogs and stuff. They actually are against all that. And they're against China and the way the Chinese are. So you're beating a group up that doesn't even have anything to do with this. He says, how's that fair? So they looked at each other and he went, well, are you supporting this or what? And I goes, I'm not supporting anything. Yes, I agree with you. Someone should be punished for this. Somewhere, somehow, whoever did this will be punished. Whether it's here, the spirit world or whatever you believe, but they will, it will, the truth will come out. But what if you find that the government was involved? What if Bill Gates was right in 2014 when he did a documentary and said that the government in Britain and America are paying the Chinese scientists to go out to the bat caves and to the animals, collect blood, saliva, make this into a, a pandemic and then find the cure for it so if it does ever get out we'll have an injection for it and even people are starting to talk now saying that the injection was really quick but don't forget it's the same it's in the same family as the SARS virus and that that also comes from China so they already had in 2003 they already had this on on the cooking as they so to speak cooking already so it wasn't it was pretty good for the scientists to think ah we could use this unfortunately i think they're trying to make it as cheap as possible to get it as out as quick as possible and it's kicking everyone's ass and that's where people don't trust and i get it i do and it's up to you to take the, the injection or not it's up to you if you look at my other videos, I'm clear on the way I feel about it. And I'm clear on the way you, what you should do before you make your decisions. Here it goes. I feel good. Do -do 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 -do. Like I knew that I would now. Do -do 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 -do. I feel good. <laughs> it's not that bad, my singing. Is it Guardian? Anyway, so yeah. So this is the walk, like I said, I did it the last half hour of our walk because um, I didn't want to bore you too much with my chatting. But like I said, look guys, whether aliens brought this to us or not, whether it's the flu virus or a form of flu virus or not, whether it's an attack, like Bill Gates said, or not, what matters now is making sure our government gives us the best treatment and not because it's cheap but the best treatment to keep us all alive not just some of us make it as easy on our bodies as possible without sitting there going oh a few thousand will die out of millions who cares because every single life animal or human actually we're all animals but like any race any life from a flower right the way up to us needs to be here that's how the world works without flowers there won't be animals without animals there won't be food without food because we all integrate to make the world turn that's the whole point of mother nature you can't survive one without the other so work together that's what she's saying look at that beautiful view guys see if i can get you in listen like the world just exists doesn't it hey this is what i'm fighting for for my future generations to live so they can see this we're all soldiers in our own world the thing about it is it's just don't listen to one view i know it's confusing and hard work trust me i've been in tears trying to find out what's going on with this and is it deadly do i have to but the government's smart, guys. 
let me tell you something, okay? If you deny, they've got to get everyone injected, whether we like it or not. But the Magna Carta says they can't force us to. In a way where they can't hold us down and inject us against our will. But what they can do is put a license on everything, including flights, going to the pub, going shopping, going and interacting with everything and everyone and say, unless you've got this card that says you were injected with the with um, the vaccine, you won't even be able to fart in public. So in the end, you'll have no choice. That's what they're going to do. They're going to license everything that I can understand why. I get it. I get the government saying, OK, because we can't force you to get the injection, we'll do it any other way. Like with me, I could not have my care workers come down and I need them badly. Without them, I don't think we'd survive for more than two weeks, to be fair. But I need them. But if I refused the injection, refused it point blank, said, no, nope, not doing it, not having it, because I've heard all these horror stories and I'm scared... I'm really scared. Well, I got told, well, we can't force you to have it, but you can't have your care workers come down, Chip, because if you get it and you pass it on to them, although they've had the injection, if you get it and you pass it on to them, it could kill people they work with because they're vulnerable as well. But you don't have to have it, but you just won't get any care until you do. What choice did they have? <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? It's not everyone's saying, oh, it's your choice. It's your choice. And yeah, Guardian, it's your choice. It's your choice. Come here. It's your choice. It's your choice. He wants water. Come on. I didn't bring the water out because I didn't think it was this warm because it said it was going to be cold today. Good boy. So they said, uh, it's your choice. It's your choice. But then they stuck things in place. It's your choice. But then you won't get your care workers, which means you can't go shopping, which means you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, because I need the adult supervision. So, <laughs> I had no choice. So all them people who say, well, you're stupid because you, you went and had it done, what would you have done in my position? If you didn't have the injection, you couldn't have care workers, and you depended on care workers to survive in society and in the world and go shopping well how what would you do would you be stupid and stubborn i mean i know i'm autistic with learning difficulties but i ain't stupid and guardian suffers and i suffer or do you have it because you have to and like i said the government's smart guys and they're going to find a way they are going to find a way to force us all to have it for our own good that's what they're gonna say it's for your own good you aren't scientists so you can't make that decision they were gonna give it the only reason why my doctor said for me to have it was because they were gonna give it to children and they said AstraZeneca is safe for children so therefore it'd be safe for chip because I have an immune system with the bowel disease of like a teenager like say 13, 14. Sometimes it goes down to 5 or 6, depending on the platelets, right? But that's what they're saying. So that's why my doctor said it would be safe. And then as soon as I had it and all the shit started happening, within two weeks, they pulled it. They pulled it. It's too dangerous. You can't give it to the kids. We're going to give them something else. But it's too late. I've already had it. Now the country on gym is, they're going to have to give me AstraZeneca again, my second one, and they haven't given me a date. And there's no way, now I've been through the first one, I want to be the soldier. Come on, Guardian, home. I want to be. Anyway, guys, this is Chip and Guardian's Adventures. Stay safe, and we'll see you at the next mug bang. Stay safe, guys, okay? <laughs>